Hey, what's up, guys? I am Joe from Workbench, and this week we're going to talk about glitch in your face. Seriously, though, that's kind of what we're going to do. This tutorial is brought to you by School of Motion. School of Motion is a great way to learn how to use After Effects, or you can take one of their other boot camps to build up your other skills if you're already more advanced. They're great for the community, and I wish they existed when I started, because then I wouldn't have had to learn all the basics piecemeal from tutorials. So definitely go check out School of Motion. The link is in the description below. Look at that. It's Sev. But that's not why we're here. Under here, we got a request for a tutorial to make a glitch effect like this Instagram thing that if you click on, you get to this. Check out this guy Pilek on Instagram. He's got a lot of cool work. I'll leave a link in the description. At first, I thought it might be using like Yano Box Mosaic, but I think it's actually Card Dance. So that's what I did. Card dance. Got dance. All right, so let's check out how to build this. So there's a lot of different things in here, and if you really want to know how everything is built, just check out our glitch tutorial playlist. I'm not really going to go super in depth on all of this stuff because it's basically the same thing over and over again. If you want to know more detail about how everything in here is set up, the project file is available below. It contains the footage, the setups, how I built all the mats and the maps and some alternate stuff that I didn't even use. So if that sounds interesting, go check that out. So each one of these top layers is built using the card dance effect, and it's referencing different versions of this source image. So you can see it's just me looking up, dancing around a little bit, looking back down, and that's it. So every one of these things is just a different version of that, except for that one, because it's a slowly evolving noise to just give things a little bit of movement. You can see it's not very much. So let's close that one up. All right. We're going to open up this lower map. You can see it's just the bottom portion of the frame. That's all that one is. Just to fill in a little bit of things at the bottom. And actually, that's not even really from this version, but I just left it in because it works. We have a greebled map, and that's just this greebled pattern stenciling out my face. That's just to lessen up the amount of like cards that we have in here. So let's close that one up. We got our glitch map, which is basically just this with a little bit of glitch on it. Just to give it something. To be honest, I don't remember exactly why I put those glitches on my face in this thing. I've done a couple of different versions of this, so it might have been for something else. But honestly, it doesn't really matter exactly how you build this because the point of this thing is to make it messed up. So it's really up to you and how much you want to build it that way. So let me solo these and then we can kind of check out a couple of them and see how they're built. So this first one is just the text that's on the outside. And there's not really much being done to it with the card dance layer. Each one of these things basically references one of the maps below. And that's usually in the first gradient layer. And then the second one of a few of these reference position, I'm not always using this. Some of them I've turned on the effects and masks instead of just source here. So this is using a slightly altered version of the source layer at the bottom. This one's mostly just the mat itself showing through. Most of these are set up in a sort of column layout. This text layer is actually a bunch of copies moved around, shifted in time. I used a couple of my scripts, stack it. And I also do one that I haven't released yet, even though I probably should because it's pretty much done. But it lets me randomize these layers in time. And then I went through manually and kind of cut them off and moved them around a little bit. On top of everything, I have a fractal noise layer with mosaic on it. So it kind of fades these all out. If I turn this off, you'll see it's actually just a bunch of different text. And even though it looks random, all of these still fit in the boxes. So I'm going to turn that back on and go back out here. Again, it's about building these things the way that you want them to be built. The only thing that might really matter is the way that the text is. And so all you have to do is make sure that your columns and rows match up between the effects. Other than that, if you need things to be split or whatever, it doesn't really matter what you set those to. So in this case, I actually have this thing matching up with the amount of columns and rows. And the only thing you really need to be worried about is that mosaic actually uses like width and height blocks. And this uses rows and columns and they're actually reversed from each other. So mosaic uses width first, which would be columns and rows second, which would be the vertical blocks. But for the rest of these things, that kind of stuff doesn't matter. This code block is basically built with just a few rows, just so that we really don't have too much broken up in here. But it has a lot of columns, so you can see they fade out across this way. Mostly in these things, I played with X position, Y position, and then X scale and Y scale. So these are based off of my image, which down here is this glitched version of my face. The X position is moved, but it's not really related to the image map. So they're all kind of built like that. So I'm really just going to show you kind of what they look like. This one's built with that glitch map. That's why there's not many copies of anything in here. And this whole gradient thing is basically a bunch of different gradients tiled like this. And they just kind of cycle. In each one of these little gradient pieces, there's actually just something with a wiggle expression on the top to just cut in and stencil it. It's really just about messing it up a bunch. So if we go back in here and turn this one off, 
So this is just a light greeble. So this basically has that same kind of stencil to cut down on the amount of copies that we have. If we go in here, it's just based off another one of these greeble things. Turn the stencil off here. This is a bunch of layers of that JS classic thing using a master property to kind of control where it's positioned. That's kind of what I've been doing in the last couple of tutorials. So if you want more information about that, check that out. But if we play it, it just moves around. This other JS classic layers on top just to kind of add some more to it. And they all just shift every few frames. So let's put that stencil back on so that'll cut down on the amount of cards that we see. Let me close a couple of these down. So if we turn the light greeble off and then we turn on the regular greeble, you'll see that this one is just white. And it outlines pretty well with my face. This is probably a catch light or something in my eye or something. When you click in right now, it's just white. It originally looked like this. So I just kind of left that on there because I like the way it looked and it made it into the final. So if we go click on this gradient one, it's basically the same thing that we had before. It's just larger blocks. And we accomplish that by changing the size of these scales. Now, if you start to get pieces outside of your actual area, sometimes turning off this back layer will fix that. In a lot of cases in this project, some of these are actually duplicated. So this actually links to different layers than the ones that they're on. So sometimes you get different backs, which actually could be an interesting thing if that's what you're looking for. So it's something to play around with. So we turn that one off. We've got this colored greeble one. I actually pre-rendered this one because it takes a long time to actually render this based on how I built it. It's very similar to that other mat. It just has a bunch of colors built in. And I have this time mat here, which I use for time displacement. And this mosaic and fractal noise actually match up with the break in the card dance effect. So I just rendered that out and brought it back in and put it in here on top. So when you play that, you get this. It's kind of interesting. It's kind of just like a base layer. So these base layers, I try to fill up the face just a little bit. And same thing with this white one here. This one was also that original greeble, but I left it as white as well. And then we have a gradient one here. And this one just uses that bottom base layer to just kind of fill it in a little bit. That was required on one of the other ones, but I just left it in here. Initially, I was actually like shooting off like big blocks of color over here, but I kind of reined that back in to keep it within the face. But you can do that by moving out the position and stuff. So to get the effect that you're looking for is going to require some experimentation. The Karn Dance effect is pretty complicated and messing around with it will kind of teach you how it works. Even I don't understand fully how everything in it works. The interactions can be complex, but I know that messing with the offset and the multiplier will help you kind of figure it out. Offset kind of pushes things already. So in this case, we're already kind of scaling it by negative three times. And this multiplier kind of takes this intensity and figures out how much more to add to it one way or the other. But for me, it's always kind of mucking around with it. And this extra comp right here, which I'm including in the project file download, you actually have like different things that I kind of came across that are kind of interesting. One that I really kind of like is this thing, which you can do without having this map on here. But I just kind of like how everything scales and it makes like just some crazy like background pattern. So it can be useful for other things too. The other one that I had on here originally kind of like a uh, half tone kind of pattern. And you can see here's that thing that I was talking about where it flips to the backside. This is actually a different layer that it's sampling. All right, so that's it. As I always say, you need to explore things, and this one is no exception. This effect can be taken a lot of different ways, and it's kind of up to you to figure out what you want to do with it. Check out all the options in this thing. Play with the source type, maybe try out Z position. There's a lot of different ways to modify the cards in this effect. In the original example I showed, there's other stuff in there that's like face track to them, and they're probably using like After Effects' face tracker or maybe something else, I'm not really sure. But you can add different lines and stuff that actually follow your face. And the great thing about this is that you don't really need like a super amazing camera because really you're just going to take the luminance values of this thing for the most part. And I even did this with a webcam and it actually turned out okay. So that's it. This is definitely one that you really need to explore. And I hope you guys go out and do that. If you have any comments or questions, leave them in the comments down below. And if you'd like to help support what we do, check out patreon.com slash workbench. Make sure you keep up with the blog at workbench.tv. I wrote a lot about the Euchre Media podcast that you definitely should check out. Not just because I was on it. Anyway, as always, I am Joe, and we'll see you next week. Bye.